Welcome, we're going to explore Commvault Kubernetes protection today. With Commvault protecting your Kubernetes applications, you can protect, migrate, and perform DR between your on-prem and cloud Kubernetes clusters. You can get started with a free trial from commvault.com slash trials like me. Commvault Command Center is your unified management interface for cloud, VMs, laptops, and now containers. Command Center makes management simple by focusing you on the issues that could impact your business. You can see at a glance your data footprint and savings from deduplication. Kubernetes is a first-class workload in your modern data center. You can find Kubernetes under the Protect menu. With Commvault, Kubernetes is just another workload. Use the same web portal you use for your VM and cloud protection today. Let's search for Kubernetes to see if we have any existing workloads. Search lets you manage your environment at scale. Commvault displays your protected Kubernetes clusters on-prem and cloud-based, and application groups that group similar apps for protection. And applications shows protected and discovered apps. As you can see, Commvault protects AKS, GKE and EKS managed Kubernetes offerings. You can be sure once you have one cluster, you will shortly have many, many more. Check out docs.commvault.com for details on supported distributions and storage. Commvault supports any CNCF distribution and any CSI driver with snapshot capability. Landscape.cncf.io lists all supported on-premise cloud and managed platforms. And consult Kubernetes GitHub for supported CSI snapshot drivers. Commvault uses CSI to snapshot your cloud native storage. If we click application groups, we can see our protected applications. Application groups assign a protection SLA to one or more apps. We can see there are a mix of production and development apps. I have a simple setup. Apps are either dev or production only. Let's take a look at our development apps. All protection operations occur from one location. Protected and unprotected app counts are shown. Available recovery points, ad hoc backup, and recovery are all easily accessible. Let's run a restore. Fine-grained recovery is key to your DevOps workflow. Restore persistent volumes, files and folders. Or just KAS manifests, pod specs, secrets, CRDs. Or restore full applications, including cross-cluster migration. Let's perform a full application restore. We will select our app and then click Restore. Application recovery restores persistent data and configuration. Next, we must decide where to restore and we are spoiled for choice. Recovery can be in place or out of place to any remote cluster. Let's choose out of place. Renaming applications allows seeding of new development projects. Let's migrate our application from on-prem to GKE. Application migration is simply a recovery to a different cluster. We will select GKE development. We can select or type a new namespace name. This will keep our applications separate from one another and then select the destination storage class. Commvault recommends CSI enabled storage. Yes, you can use Commvault for storage migrations too. Application data and configuration will now restore to the remote cluster. Let's click view jobs. Real-time progress may be monitored in the job monitor. Let's take a look at integrating your dev teams and Commvault though. Your developers need the freedom to release applications anytime. 
and data protection should adapt and discover new apps as they are released. This cluster has dev and production apps, but only developers can truly identify production or development applications. Let's click Manage and edit the list of protected apps. Select individual applications or volumes to protect. Namespace and label selectors automatically discover applications at backup time. Application delivery occurs around the clock. Let's make backup dynamic too. Click Add Label Selector. By using label selectors, developers simply label their apps for protection. Commvault will automatically discover applications based on supplied label selectors. Click the Preview button to see the discovered applications matching our criteria. Commvault will contact the cluster and identify any new applications. We found a new Postgres demo app selected for protection. Labels help capture applications in namespaces that may not be protected. This is how you can integrate with your developers without requiring restrictive rules on placement of apps in the cluster. Let's check on our restore status now. Click the job status icon top right. Job monitor displays all active protection operations. Quick status is available by clicking the job ID. And view job details displays detailed statistics. Our restore to Google is still running. Let's speed up the clock with the magic of editing. Application lists shows our single application restore. Okay, our restore has completed. Let's check our application in Google GKE. First, let's check our GKE cluster status. We should see our nodes all online and ready. We have restored to a KFS 1.17 cluster. Next, let's check for running pods. Our Postgres restore pod is now running in the development namespace. Our restore orchestrated both volume creation, restore and application scheduling. Let's take a look at our persistent volumes. A persistent volume has been provisioned per replica. There are three volumes created all up. Let's take a look at how our volume was dynamically provisioned. I'm grabbing the PV name, I don't want to type all that manually. We can now describe the persistent volume. Okay, pd.csi.storage.gke.io, or the CSI driver, has created our volume in US Central 1-C. Commvault leveraged the Kubernetes API and CSI to dynamically provision the cloud storage. That makes application mobility and lifecycle as simple as a restore. Keep protection simple, start with a plan. Don't be forced to onboard each application separately. Plans apply SLA across your apps and clusters. Create plans when you need different backup frequency or retention. We can see development backup occurs daily and production every eight hours. I keep things simple, dev or production, regardless of location. Start today and add Kubernetes to your protected data landscape. You just need your Kube API server URL. 
and a service account with access to your applications. And then you can get started protecting your Kubernetes applications. Thanks for watching.